Hey guys, Matt, Cichlid Dojo, back again with another fish room update. Uh, this update is for the month of September. Um, lots of uh, lots of good updates here uh, since last month's update, and I'll go through them uh, one by one. Uh, in addition, I'll. Uh, Obviously, uh, I always try to mention everything uh, as far as fry and fish that are uh, available. Um, and so, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep following the videos, uh, you know, for any of that stuff if you guys are always interested in getting new fish. And, uh, and of course, uh, please like, and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you can. It really helps me out. Uh, appreciate all you guys, uh, loyal. Uh, subscribers and, and people who watch the the videos on this channel so um, anyways uh, we'll get started here um, probably just start right here uh, a little bit different than uh, most updates but uh, we'll get right into it so uh, first update here uh, this is the five foot rack uh, the top is a 150 gallon uh, tank which uh, houses uh, basically two pairs of uh, Herichthys carpentis, uh, Escondidos, aka Blue Texas, and uh, always seems to be some fun action going on in this tank. Let's get in close here for you guys. So um, my, my number one pair, or my favorite pair, which is uh, on the left, uh, you can see female uh, appears to be in uh, breeding dress. Um, she may have some fry in the pot. I'm not sure. Um, I kind of stopped following uh, because I'm just not anywhere near to the point where I need to uh, remove her fry and, and grow more out. Uh, I have plenty um, and you'll see later on in the video. Uh, and uh, there's the male. So um, they're doing pretty good. Uh, this is my, again, my favorite pair, my number one pair, uh, and they're on the left half here, uh, and they spawn very frequently, probably every, uh, I'd say every three weeks, uh, there's a spawn that occurs, and uh, it's the same thing as always, uh, the female will lay eggs on top of the sponge filter, and then uh, she'll eventually move those eggs or fry into the pot. Uh, and then she guards them and it's a uh, usually a pretty big batch uh, so uh, it will be very easy if I need to remove some fry and, and grow them out uh, but right now I just don't need to I have plenty of fry off of them already uh, but I'm loving the pair uh, they're doing really good together right now uh, I couldn't ask for more in a carpentis pair and uh, doing good putting some size on the mail finally so I'm happy uh, the pair on the right so uh, there's the male and he's still healing his tail a little bit from when I had him in the community tank uh, I got a little rough in there especially near the end when I added the depi uh, but I think he's beautiful as well and hopefully that heal uh, that I'm sorry that fin makes a full recovery uh, we'll see there uh, but it appears to be slowly getting nicer and nicer. Um, you'll see in the pot right here, if you can make that out, uh, there's another big pile of fry. Uh, it looks like a pretty large batch. And uh, this pair spawns not quite as frequently as the pair on the left, but uh, they definitely uh, do almost as good of a job and they have very large batches of fry as well. So. Um, more fry that will just kind of, uh, you know, hang out there and actually I see a, a free swimmer right there. Um, but anyways, the fry will just kind of get sucked up by the filter, get eaten by uh, the other side or the silver dollars that are in the tank because uh, I have those as dithers. So, um, yeah, Carpentis is doing good, spawning well and uh, couldn't be happier. So. Uh, We'll go down to the uh, bottom of that rack. Um, not gonna be able to see them that well, uh, but if you guys follow the channel, you know exactly what's in here. Uh, these are the uh, multifaciatus. It's gonna be hard to get a 
without glare pitcher guys, but a uh, uh, very big Freddy, Freddy pair or multi fasciatus. Um, and uh, they haven't spawned for a while actually. Uh, I do have a batch of their phi growing out and uh, this guy's uh, still very aggressive. So uh, they just prefer a bare bottom tank uh, and uh, I have a perfect setup for them right here, right here in the bottom of five foot, five foot long by 18 inch wide tank. So I keep them down here. Uh, occasionally through the year I might move them up uh, to, uh, you know, get better video of them and, and footage. But for the most part, that's their favorite tank down there. So I just keep with it. Uh, moving on, guys. Uh, Right here is another five foot setup uh, on top of uh, a four footer down there. Um, and uh, this is a 100 gallon and it houses my Geophagus Brasiliensis. So we'll get in close here. Um, but as you can see, there's always some breeding action here. Uh, the male, absolutely my favorite out of all of them. Uh, you know, I really like this guy. Uh, I think he's absolutely beautiful, um, and uh, he's always he's always in the pot. He's always hanging out here with one of I, I can't tell exactly how many females. Uh, starting to get a lot more aggressive than in the beginning when I used to have him, uh, and so I'm gonna have to monitor that. And but definitely got a group of these guys, so that's what's really saving the fish. None of them are getting picked off, and and none of them are getting. Uh, too really thrashed at this moment but uh as they get bigger because i believe they'll get in this male might get in the 10 plus inch range maybe 12 inches who knows uh they might need a larger tank so i definitely have uh you know two foot wide tanks uh that i could devote to them maybe the 150 gallon in the future we'll see um but doing well uh they might actually have some fry in here they did uh less than a week ago I'm not sure if uh, they've all gotten picked off, but um, they're the same story where uh, I just don't need any more of the fry right now. Uh, so thankfully I just uh, let them do their thing and uh, let it play out. So uh, down here below guys is just a 75 gallon four footer. Um, these are um, Rio Gaius Feste uh, fry, red tears. Uh, they're in that, you know, you know, the smallest is probably a half inch, but largest is uh, three quarters of an inch, uh, possibly a little bit bigger. And those are ones that I'm moving right now, guys. I've been, uh, been shipping those out, uh, and they're F1s. So if you're interested, uh, let me know. They're off of my favorite pair of Wild Caught Festi, which I'm gonna show here in a second. Um, so actually, we'll, we'll get to them right now. So message me if you're interested. And here we go. We'll try to get this without the glare as much as possible, guys. Um, so there's the male, uh, wild cut, real guys male. Um, and there is his female. Um, absolutely amazing species. I, I, if anybody, fall, if you follow my channel, you know that Festa are probably my favorite uh, out of everything. I keep the most uh, I keep the most pairs um, of these guys and I grow out the most fry wise because I think it, you know, you can tell here uh, just by watching them, I think they look absolutely stunning. Uh, colors are looking really good uh, and uh, getting better every day as they get bigger. Um, this male just seems to put on more size and, and his profile gets taller, uh, you know, every month. and. Uh, and these guys are getting to be more and more consistent spawners. Uh, you know, uh, it seems to be happening more frequently. Um, I just actually pulled a batch of their fry, uh, which will go to the top. And that's kind of why the female's up here. Um, she likes to guard these breeder boxes, which I, you know, I, I, I remove their fry if I need to grow them out. And this is their latest batch right here. Uh, I did leave about 10% I believe of the fry in the tank uh, but uh, the remainder are here they don't have extremely large batches of fry by any means but uh, good enough I'd say definitely 100 to 150 um, which is plenty 
especially when I have a bunch of batches right now. So um, the breeder box on the right is actually uh, fry from the, the other pair, which is on the right of this divider, which uh, we'll get to in here in a second. Um, but besides that, I, I think they're definitely my favorite pair uh, of feste that I keep right now. And uh, if you recall, I, you know, I kind of started over with a different population uh, about a year and a half to two years ago uh, with some wild cots that were brought in and, uh, and they're growing finally, you know, a little slow to start, but uh, finally getting there. So back in the pot, looks like they are. So anyways, guys, uh, let's move to the pair on the right. Um, this is the male, which uh, originally was definitely my favorite. He had, he had the taller profile uh, from the start. He was the bigger male, so more dominant. Uh, but uh, he actually had some issues with his eye and still does. Uh, he may, might be blind in that left eye. Um, doesn't take away from anything else as far as being a breeder. Uh, you know, I still have fry of theirs. Actually, I have two batches, and I'll show you uh, what the bigger batch, kind of what I'm planning to do with them. But uh, there is a female in this tube. They're a little on the more skittish uh, side. Uh, there's, there are two other females in here as well. Um, and then there's the biggest of the silver dollars that I have here. So uh, this, this group is doing good, using them more so for breeders, not so much as showing them off, but uh, definitely uh, it, it actually does get fun to watch the two bigger females fight over this male. So. Uh, I'll have to get some video of that uh, in a bit. Um, all right, over here, guys. Uh, try to get myself out of that view. Uh, this is a 75 gallon uh, on top, another one of those uh, cheap stands, you know, I just put together uh, with some 10 gallons on the bottom. But uh, that 75 is the one that I'm doing the uh, Fry um, Grow Out series and the first one is on the Islanum. So uh, if you did watch my Islanum video that I think I posted a day, or, day ago, uh, it's pretty exciting because uh, I didn't plan to do that and we'll get right into why if you guys missed that video, but I encourage you guys to go check it out if you wanna see uh, some better footage. But you can see this pair over here. Um, they, well, they weren't paired up a week ago and now it appears they are. Uh, at an extremely small size. Uh, the male, I would guess, is around three inches. And uh, the female right here is about two and a half. And you can see uh, her eggs. Uh, it appears to me like they are uh, viable and they will hatch. And uh, like I mentioned in the actual update video, um, I don't plan on growing any of these fry out. Um, you know, I plan on letting it play out here uh, in this tank. They're very small. I don't think they can do uh, a ton of damage with the other 40, 50 uh, fry in the tank. Uh, so I think I'm safe right now, but um, I was thinking about maybe if they spawn, you know, a couple more times and are a little bit bigger, I might, I might put in a divider in to protect the other fry. So uh, we'll see there. But uh, the rest of the fry in the tank, you know, uh, they range in size, but uh, you know, I'm definitely moving the one to two inches uh, in that size range. Uh, you know, I'll try to do my best to get you the bigger size uh, if you're interested, guys. But, uh, you know, I would say don't don't pass on that. Uh, you know, I might I may at some time just start uh, moving these, uh, you know, to a fish shop or, or whatnot. Um, if I need to, it depends on that pair and how, how aggressive they get. So, uh, yeah, Slonim are doing well. Uh, let me know if you're interested. Uh, down below, we'll just talk about it real quick. Uh, on the right side, uh, these are more F1 Feste from my favorite pair, pair number two. And those two tanks are Carpentis Fry. So that is one reason why I don't need to pull any more. Um, I just, uh, I have more than I can handle right now. So uh, we'll move, move on. Let's start right here, guys. Um, I'm gonna try to get in here very slowly, and uh, there we go. So this is the Andino Acara Stalsbergi tank. Uh, this is a 120 gallon, four footer. 
Um, and there's a group of these guys, a uh, group of these wild cuts. I think there's about 10 left. I did lose one um, about two weeks ago. Uh, you know, I have these breeder boxes, which are, you know, one of the, my favorite ways to, uh, you know, start the fry off, uh, you know, when I, when I want to grow them out. And, uh, you know, sometimes there could be little slits between the glass lid and the breeder box, and I think one of them jumped out through that. So, uh, unfortunately, I found him in, in one morning, and uh, it was too late for him. So, a uh, little bit on the shy side, uh, these fish, but uh, I am planning to do this tank right and actually remove this tank because it has issues with the inside of the glass, the front glass, when I uh, put the lights on and it's it just very hazy. Um, and so I'm gonna move on with this tank. Uh, I have another one to replace it, which I'm painting right now. And so uh, hopefully er everything goes well uh, with the move. Um, we'll have a better tank that I can film. So uh, look forward to that if you're interested in the species. Uh, and I also do have fry available for these, F1 fry available. Uh, they're getting bigger, so they're in the I'd say very close, almost average one inch, but I'm uh, labeling them as uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch. So if you're interested, guys, let me know. Uh, everybody I've talked to who has these fry, well, just about everybody, uh, they seem to be doing really well for them. Uh, some from the first batch are getting that three inch plus range, three to four inch range, which is great. Big eaters, uh, no issues whatsoever. So. Uh, it makes me really happy to hear that. So if you're interested, let me know, guys. Um, and then we'll go over here uh, to this other 120. Uh, this is what I was talking about, what I'm uh, doing. Well, first of all, this guy jumped right in front of the camera. Uh, I had this really big Brasiliensis fry in one of my tanks, and uh, I just removed him because he was just so much bigger than the other fry. And I threw him in with these Feste grow outs, which is going to be my next uh, series uh, that I plan on doing for the grow outs, uh, but I probably won't get that started for maybe a month, month or two. Um, these Feste Fry are off that big male, um, and I'm really excited to see if I can get something, you know, that resembles him, uh, minus the eye issue, of course, uh, which I don't think they'll inherit, but um, yeah, so I got about 30 to 35 of his fry and I'm gonna hopefully do them right and uh, we'll have some fun watching the updates uh, you know hopefully that four inch mark uh, start to see some real coloring up uh, females and males showing themselves and and uh, we'll go from there so um, I'm excited to see that happen so stay tuned for that guys if you're interested and even this Brasiliensis growing out here with these feste that, that you know, I, I didn't know where to put them, and I just figured, um, you know, both from uh, South American uh, cichlids, so uh, thought I'd give it a shot. You know, I don't think this Brasiliensis has given these Feste any issues, uh, but if he does, I'll remove them. Probably throw them out in a pond or something, so we'll see. All right, guys, let's move around here. Uh, cover everything I wanted to, and so, don't mind the mess here. We'll wrap around here. All right, so this is the uh, 180 gallon. Uh, kind of just turned into a community tank, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, it houses uh, a number of different species. If you follow the channel, uh, you're probably very familiar with them. Um, but we'll get right into it. And uh, let's see, what's the best way we're gonna view this? So I. I have one um, Vieja Sinspelum, uh, you can see there, I believe it's a big male, and uh, you know, he's doing pretty well in there. He's holding his own, not having any issues. Um, I have about uh, six, six of these Cribro Heroes uh, Alfari that are doing really good in here as well. Uh, they are just really greedy fish. Uh, eat uh, the majority of uh, you know of whatever I throw in here at all times. Uh, there's one that has no tail. Uh, everybody knows who follows that was 
receive like that. And then uh, I of course have uh, some more Carpentis in here. I believe I have about three females and one uh, big male who's paired off with a female. Um, and I wanted to show this, you know, <coughs> one issue. Uh, you could see this big male right here and you could see his lip. Um, looks like some kind of bacterial infection, I'm guessing, uh, has broken out there on the lip, possibly from lip locking. Uh, you know, there's, there's other aggressive species in here. And so I may have to do something real quick here. Um, I'm guessing that's, uh, you know, signs of duck lip. Um, however, he does have a spawn there. If you guys can see, well, if he gets out of the way here real quick, uh, and you can see his female, uh, she always lays eggs, there, there they are, right at the top of that driftwood. So um, they're in the middle of a spawn, but uh, I might have to snatch this guy out and see if I can treat him and, and save him, because uh, I think that could be really deadly. I've lost a few fish in my time uh, due to that, and uh, definitely want to try to save him if possible. So I gotta, I gotta find a way to, to find a tank, basically. So. Um, and treat this guy. So that's on my to-do list uh, right after this. I just noticed this right as I was starting the video um, today, so I'll get to that. Uh, besides that, um, we do still have uh, this female uh, Rio Norhano Trimac, uh, and she is a very feisty uh, one in this tank. Um, she's, she's the female of that male, keeper male Trimac that uh, we'll get to here at the end. Um, and uh, she kind of always hovers right around that middle. That's like her area. And she's always bickering with uh, the Depii or the Depi uh, that you see them on the left. Um, they're always on this area. Uh, they spawn very frequently in this pot. I actually, uh, they had an extremely large spawn uh, here a week or two ago. I got footage of it. I just haven't put that video together yet, but uh, that's on my to-do list for uh, this upcoming week. Uh, so look out for that. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty good spawn, but I definitely didn't need the fry, so I didn't, uh, I didn't suction any of them out. So uh, female there is doing good. Uh, it's not the biggest easy eater. It appears to be really concerned about breeding and uh, so that's why she looks on the skinny side right now, but male is looking really good. Uh, I'm really liking the species. So uh, besides that, there is a lone uh, firemouth in the tank. Uh, he's doing pretty good, he or she, I'm not really sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, he just kind of was a rescue at one point and just made it uh, in every tank he was in. and. Uh, this looks like it might be his permanent residence, so uh, for the most part, they're all doing good in there, minus the uh, lip issues on that uh, Blue Texas male, so I'll have to hopefully be able to save him, but uh, we'll see. Uh, down below, guys, uh, these are the F1 uh, Andino Car Stalsbergy Fry uh, that are available, so um, message me if you're interested. Uh, and we'll get you some of those. Uh, I'm not going to get in the corner tank. That's a, a third pair of uh, Feste that I have uh, that I just had to move down here uh, temporarily until I get them a better tank. So uh, they do have fry in there as well. So, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to find them a much nicer tank soon. So we'll see. Okay, up here, uh, this is a four foot four foot rack. Uh, up top is a 75 gallon that houses the Cribro Heroes Altifrons. So uh, we'll get in here and I'll start talking about them. Uh, you know, their growth has kind of uh, slowed down a little bit. Um, they, they stopped eating as much uh, in the beginning. They're really big eaters uh, and they were just fighting over food. Um, and uh, you know, I think I was adding some other flake foods and whatnot uh, in addition to their normal, their standard stuff. And uh, I think they just preferred that flake over everything else and they stopped eating the other stuff. So I'm trying to get them back on the pellet that uh, they were eating initially. And uh, hopefully that 
that helps them. Um, the Cribro Harris Dequis are all gone now. Um, that last uh, bigger one, uh, he just uh, withered away and, uh, and passed. So uh, that species just did not do well here whatsoever. Um, I'm not really sure what the issues were. Uh, maybe it was something uh, associated with my water uh, parameters, which is, uh, you know, higher pH and, and very hard water. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, they started that, that one, that last one started as one of the bigger fish, uh, bigger fry here, um, and definitely was eating. And then, uh, you know, slow, slowly but surely, one by one, I had three of them, and then and now I have zero. So, um, not really sure on that species, but it's not something I wanted to really, really focus on. Uh, these altifrons were, were what I was looking forward to. So uh, I think they're looking pretty good right around the corner from uh, really starting to shine, hopefully, but we'll see. Okay, guys, uh, down below, uh, this is a 60 gallon, and uh, these are uh, Brasiliensis fry, uh, one of two batches. Um, most of these are that one inch plus range um, and they are available so if you're interested uh, let me know um, that other batch that I, uh, I have it you know I, I'm not touching right now it's they're in a pond uh, I, it's just kind of an experimental I want to see how they do outside as fry uh, they're in a hundred gallon pond and uh, I plan on keeping their, them there uh, you know year round until till next summer and then we'll see uh, how they are, how they grow outside, um, but they're doing good so far, uh, but they're very similar in size. So, uh, you know, if you're interested guys, let me know. Great species, uh, really happy with them. So, all right, let's move on to the last uh, little roll of tanks here, guys. All right, so this is a, uh, get on this side of the tank. This is a 90 gallon uh, that basically has um, my two male Trimax. Um, if you recall, I started with a group of about 10, uh, three to five inches. And I slowly worked my way down uh, to basically what I wanted to keep. Uh, you know, it was a tough decision between these two males. Um, the male on the, on the left right here uh, he was my keeper pick for a while um, and uh, you know I think he has the nicer profile currently and uh, eventually uh, you know I, I, I went with and decided to go with uh, the male on the right um, you know he has slightly better or he's got the teardrop patterns I wouldn't say that's better it's all a preference thing but uh, you know I decided to choose that uh, going forward and uh, you know, he spawns really well with that female that I showed you in the community tank. So uh, I think he's looking good. I'm, I'm happy with him. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll proceed with this guy going forward. Um, and uh, this male on the left, uh, he is uh, he is taken. Um, I'm going to hopefully be shipping this guy out this week. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll see what we're going to do. Uh, in this tank, obviously, I could easily move that female over here um, and remove play with the divider if I want to get them uh, spawning again. Uh, but uh, and, and then another news: uh, I did have trimac fry uh, from this guy, and I decided, uh, you know, I, one of my buddies and you saw his update video um, this past week, uh, Mike Mike Cichlids. Uh, if you haven't seen that go check it out. He carry, he keeps different species than I do. Uh, he's more into geophagus and, and smaller centrals. Um, he had an empty 40 gallon and he, he offered to uh, grow some fry out. So I, uh, I moved over the remaining, I believe 2530 Trimac fry. Uh, he's gonna be growing those out and uh, maybe he wants to keep, uh, keep his pair and then I'll be probably getting them back uh, hopefully in that three inch plus range. Uh, and then uh, maybe I'll keep a nice male if I see something. Uh, but majority of those will all be available um, once I get them back. So uh, keep an eye on that if you guys are interested. But uh, here's my uh, 
my keeper male that I'm going to go with right now. So anyways, he always messes with this sand. Uh, I'm sure uh, it's pretty common with, with sorry guys, uh, video cut out there. Um, but anyways, what I was saying is he always messes with this sand, the substrate in here. And uh, you know, it happens very quickly, even after I smooth it all out and after, uh, you know, maintenance in their tank. Uh, and it just always ends up like that. You know, sand goes on top of the sponges and just gets piled up in the corners over here. So anyways, uh, he has a lot of fun doing that apparently. Um, down below guys, uh, three 10 gallon tanks, a uh, little update progress on this, these fry. Um, these are the Depi I fry, the Depi. Um, they appear to be doing good. Uh, I did have some die off initially. Um, some in the breeder box, maybe it got too crowded, uh, but they're down to a nice core group of about 50 to 75 of them. Some of them are actually in that three quarters of an inch range plus. Uh, you know, I'm still gonna hold on until the majority of the group's a little bit bigger, but uh, they will become available guys here. Uh, hopefully, I'm guessing in a month. So uh, if you're interested, keep following the videos. I'll definitely announce that there first. Uh, this middle uh, tank, these guys are all skittish. These are some Stalsbergy. That was one of the smaller batches I decided to grow out. Um, so I thought I'd just throw them down here and see how they do. Uh, I didn't want to combine them with the other tank, but uh, I may have to for tank space, so we'll see. And then over to the right, uh, these are the um, Multifasciatus, the Freddies. Uh, they're fry. Um, they're doing really good and they're getting closer by the day uh, to being available. Um, and uh, I would guess probably a month. Uh, I'll probably uh, put them up, announce it here first guys. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out and uh, let me know when it comes time. All right guys, well the last tank uh, that I believe I'm gonna show, well actually the last two tanks, uh, these, this is the 40 gallon breeder uh, that has the um, Therictus maculopinus and the Panamensis in here. Uh, I'm really enjoying these guys. Um, you could see these col the colors coming in. I'm trying to get in real close here, uh, especially on this male. I believe it's a male. Uh, I think it's just looking amazing. Um, he's kind of the tank boss, uh, although he's you know, he's really bossy when it comes to his own species. You could see the smallest of the Panamensis swimming by. Uh, really uh, kind of aggressive when it comes to his own species. Uh, some of the bigger Panamensis, uh, they, uh, he doesn't really pay too much attention to them and they are equally aggressive towards themselves. Um, I'll try to get on one of the Panamensis there. And they're really starting to grow on me as well. You know, I, I kind of, you know, I just kind of buddy had them available and I decided to just get some and try them out. You know, I knew the risks uh, that they were, you know, th might have some issues with bloat and, and whatnot. Um, I still have four out of five uh, and I think they're doing pretty good. Um, try to get on another one here. Yeah, I swim back there, but uh, yeah, they're doing good. Slow growers. They don't get as big as uh, a lot of the other cichlids that I keep. Um, but uh, I'm enjoying them and uh, you know they're still doing good in this tank although I may have to think about moving them to a bigger tank at some point uh, maybe a 75 or that 100 gallon uh, we'll see what we're gonna do here uh, it's always like playing Tetris here with your fish uh, so yeah there's a good shot of one of them fun species good eaters and doing well so knock on wood there all right and then down below guys uh, not really much to see the fish are all skittish and shy because uh sun's shining right in on them but these are the carpentas uh blue texas fry uh there's there's two bigger ones available in here that are inch and a half two inches probably two inches I, i'm not sure i haven't measured them but then there's a lot of one inch plus guys in here uh they're available if you're interested um, and uh, all you got to do is message me uh, on, you know, my uh, social media apps, uh, Facebook, Instagram, 
and uh, we'll get you out some fish, guys, uh, some fry. Um, and uh, if you don't have any of those uh, media apps, then uh, feel free to uh, leave your email in the comments here uh, for the video, and uh, we'll we'll figure out a way to communicate. Um, but anyways, that's a uh, that's about a wrap, guys. Uh, I don't usually show the ponds in this tank. I'll you know occasionally I'll do pond updates, but I uh, uh, hope you. Uh, like the update for September and uh, even if you didn't uh, feel free to leave me comments you know uh, feedback what you'd like to see more of uh, how I can make these videos better um, I'm always uh, I'm always open to suggestions guys so anyways uh, thanks for tuning in guys and uh, until next time bye now